and a pre-service prayer. Just want to invite you all to engage with us, stand up, enter into your prayer language. We really want this to be a time of corporate intercession as we prepare for our conference to stir the atmosphere and get ready for all that the Lord's going to do. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. There's no one like you, God. You are sovereign. You are supreme above all. We welcome you in this place tonight, Father, asking that you have preeminence in every heart that is seated here tonight. We declare you as worthy, our King Most High, our mediator at the right hand of God. We declare you are worthy. Father, we ask that as we prepare for this conference this weekend and as we enter in, there's a call that we must answer. Come up here. Come up here. So I pray over every person in this room tonight, Father, that our gaze would not be set on the things of this world, but we would look up and see the door opened in the heavens and the throne set in the heavens with God Almighty seated on it. Every spirit of religion that has caused blindness, we cast it off tonight in the name of Jesus. We declare open eyes and revelation to fall tonight your gaze to the throne room, to the one who looks like Sardius and Jasper, to the one with the emerald rainbow above his head. He is your God most high. Jesus, we ask tonight that you give us revelation for every heart here that has come thinking that they're going to experience something. We ask that you encounter them with throne room revelation in Jesus' name that their identity as they leave here tonight and is that they're here in your presence, it will never be the same. Never the same, Father, that their identity is rooted in your throne room. We declare with the elders and the angels, holy, holy, holy are you, God. There is none like you. I ask right now, Lord, that you would stir the hearts of your people with this cry, that their eyes would
just as John turned to see the voice which was speaking to him. God, we hear your still small voice, God, as we lay our heads on our pillows, God. We hear your voice in this generation and in this time. And God, we're just here corporately by your grace to turn and see the voice that is speaking to us. We want to see you face to face. We want to look at you in your eyes. We are here for a divine encounter with you, King Jesus. And it is your will. This is not something that we're going to beg and, and, get, and, get, and, get, and twist your arm and, 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 and that you're, you're cold and distant, God. This is something that you want to do in your body. And you're here even now. God, we bring forth our alabaster jars just to say thank you for what you've done. Thank you for who you are. We're not here for a quick impartation. We're not here for another revival shot in the arm. We just want to see you, King Jesus. We want to know you, King Jesus. We want to lay hold of you, King Jesus, to see you high and lifted up in the beauty and the majesty of your splendor, King Jesus. We want to lay hold of the hem of your robe, King Jesus. One touch, one word. We magnify your name. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. High and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We lift you higher and higher, King Jesus. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. We want to see you high and lifted up. Yes. Holy are you, God, creator of the heavens and the earth, for by your will everything was created. By your will it existed. So I just pray to you tonight, Lord, that every person in this building would be filled with the revelation that they are the living breath of God Almighty, that their voices would not be silenced, but that something deep down on the inside of them, the deep that cries to deep would rise up and they would release, Lord God, the very breath that you placed in them, in Jesus' name. Just as the elders cast their crowns before the throne, we come to you tonight declaring there is nothing that you're not worthy of. We lay it down tonight, every single thing, Lord God, and we say you are worthy. You are worthy, King Jesus. Open eyes tonight, Father, to see you rightly. Blinders and scales fall off tonight in the name of Jesus that you will know your identity, you will know your calling, you will know your worth as a son and daughter of the Most High God. Let your spirit of revelation fill your people tonight, Lord, that they leave this place never the same. In Jesus' name. See you high and lifted 
divine participants, partakers of a heavenly calling. Come on. We want to see you high and lifted up. We magnify you, King Jesus. We want to see you high and lifted up. We sing praises of adoration to you, King Jesus. We lift up our voice. A thousand thanksgivings aren't enough. We bless you, Lord.
generational freedom tonight. That this will be a people that walk in generational legacy in the name of Jesus. You are not a God that works in one move at one time. You are a God that plans for generations to come. So we lay it at your feet tonight, Lord, and say that we surrender all to the work that you're doing here tonight and throughout this weekend. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray.
Let's stay in this heart posture. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you these things. The four living creatures, each having six eyes, full of eyes around and within and they do not rest day or night saying holy 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 lord god almighty who was and is and is to come father we just say open heavens in this place we say open heavens in this place would you release the agenda of heaven in this place, in this room? We come against every cap. We come against every hindrance and we speak freedom. Hey, Yaramakaye. As we step into worship, we want to stay in this posture looking up. I believe this is a holy invitation to come up higher. You're not just here for a conference. You're not just here for a service. You're not just here for a weekend or an experience. We are here for encounter. Encounter. I really feel the Lord wants the children. Where are the children in this place? Can we give a round for the children? I believe they're going to help us enter in. I believe they're going to help us enter in. Worship team, let's go. I just want to stay in that place that we were in. And like Claudia did, invite them up. If, you, if anyone else would like to come up, this is what we call the river. If you'd like to get in the river, I don't know about you, but when I'm standing up there and I feel slanted, I feel like I'm going to fall the whole time. So <laughs> that's just me. But you're welcome to come up here because it's level ground right here. We're all level ground. I just want to stay in this place a little longer. Before we just transition. And I can hear the sound of rain coming to America again. And I can hear the sound of rain coming to America again and I can hear the sound of rain coming to America again and I can hear the sound of rain coming to Concord again, and I can hear the sound of rain come into my family again, and I can hear the sound of rain come into America, America. Let it rain, let it rain, and open the flood. Come on, sing that out.
going to let the rocks cry out in my place. And I think for most churches in America, let me just say this. I think for most churches in America, we would be blowing them out the water right now. But I think we can go up higher. And I don't just mean in voice level. That's not what I'm talking about here. But I think we can offer up things that the Lord's been asking for and not just sing songs like praise God of whom will the blessings flow. But as we sing this, let's offer him the things he's been asking, whether it's been your time, your money, your relationships. I, I just don't want to sing songs this weekend. I want to mean songs this weekend. And I think that we can be rocks if our actions don't match our words. So when I say I don't want to let the rocks cry out in my place, that's what I mean. So let's posture our hearts and let's sing this again. Welcome to the conference <laughs> where we're not here to make you feel good. We're him to bring him glory and release an aroma to him one that smells good, one that's not tainted, one that is lovely and pleasing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because he is worthy, 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 he is worthy. How? To praise God from whom all the
just one. It's just one chief and two men's burden.
love song tonight. Here's our love song tonight. It's all for you, glory. Here's our love song tonight. It's all for you. It's all. It's all for you. Yes. Yes, it's all for you. It's all for you. Lord, it's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. Because you're my greatest privilege. You're my deepest joy. Yeah. It's to know you, Lord, and to love you more. My greatest privilege, my deepest joy, it's to know you, Lord, and to love you more. It's my greatest privilege. My deepest joy, it's to know you, Lord, and to love you more. Can we just lift our hands in this place? And the Lord would say, many of you have come this weekend looking for blueprints. Many have come this weekend looking for the coordinates. Many of you have come looking for direction. And I say to you tonight, I am the direction, says the Lord. I am the blueprint, says the Lord. I am the coordinates, said the Lord. I am. Father, we pray for a revelation of I am tonight. I want you to just reach up for that tonight a little bit. If you're here sir, seeking direction, seeking a blueprint, seeking a next step, the Spirit of God is saying, I'm it. Jesus, we pray that you would unveil yourself this weekend. We ask that you would reveal who you really are to us. Moses finds himself in a season needing direction. He's a leader of millions of people. And he says, God, show me your glory. I don't know what he was expecting. But in essence, God says, I'm going to show you who I am. See, Moses was expecting God to do something for him. And God was ready to be someone for him. I'm telling you, many of us here are looking for God to do something for us when he's trying to be that person for us. All eyes on Jesus. Just two more minutes. Don't look at me. Don't look at the person. Jesus, we fix our eyes upon you this weekend. Let no man, no session, no agenda. Let nothing get in the way of an encounter with you. We pray for eye salve in the room tonight. We cry out like blind Bartimaeus, son of David, have mercy on us. We pray for mercy this weekend. That you would captivate the gaze of a generation. That you would purify our eye gates in this hour. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see him. 
Jesus, we want to see you this weekend. We want to behold your beauty and your glory and your splendor. Just 30 more seconds. I really believe it's important, this opening session, that we fix our gaze on him. He is the plan. He is the blueprint. He is the future. He is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. You are who we seek, Jesus. Grab the hand of the person next to you. Just want you to take 20, 30 seconds and, and pray. Lord, give them a fresh encounter this weekend. Remove the veils, remove the scales, remove the blinders. Jesus, we want to see you. We want to know you. We want to be transformed into your likeness. No distractions this weekend. No more phone calls. All inferior pleasures go. All other agendas are unnecessary this weekend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in agreement with that, would you say amen? Amen. Would you take just a few more seconds and welcome someone around you as we begin to transition? we got folks from all over the nation. As most of you know, we're maxed out this weekend. A lot of people aren't even here yet. (laughs) So we do have an overflow room in the other side of the building. If you need more space, there's a live stream in here over there. But if you have seats around you, just help somebody. How many of you are happy to be here? Well, we want to officially welcome you to the Alter Global headquarters. Some of you know we planted a church last year. We've got our Alter School of Discipleship. All of these things are on one campus here. Just so grateful for you to join us this weekend. Each night of the conference... Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night, we're going to be taking up an offering. Who's excited for that? So each night of the conference, there's three opportunities that you can give. 
We're making history this weekend. Say history. Why? One, because you're here. And two, we are taking the biggest leap of faith we have ever done since we started. We have never offered a conference free since we started. And this weekend, as you know, it's free. So let's give Jesus a round of applause for that. Amen. Lord spoke to my heart and said, make this one free. Just sow it into this generation and I'll bring you the people that can help fund it. So we're making the need known out there. We need about 400 people to sow $100 and we can make, meet the budget. How's that sound? So we're trusting God. 400 people can sow $100. Many of us would have sown that anyways, but we're believing that at least we can meet the budget and bring in funds even more than that. So who's with me? Okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to be bold tonight. There are envelopes in front of you. There should be a QR code in front. But if you know you can sow $100 tonight, I just want you to stand. I'm the most practical guy in the world, and I'm a giver too. So I brought five $100 bills. So if you don't have 100, I want you to come down, and I've got four more. Okay? I need three more people. I love kids too. Come on. Of course. All right, I just sowed seed into four other lives, and who else in here could sow more than 100? Okay, who else? Doesn't need to be manipulation, doesn't need to be control, doesn't need to be weird. We just want to say, Father, your will is your bill, and you're going to send the right people here that can sow, okay? So let's pray. If you're standing, I want to ask you to give. If the Lord puts it on your heart to give for somebody else, do it. If the Lord tells you to give tomorrow night, Saturday night, we welcome you to sow. But we want to honor and we want to bless all these ministries that God has sent here. We want to bless this worship team. We want to take care of the house. If you're watching online, you can obviously sow as well in the comments. But how many of you will believe with me by faith that it will just be taken care of tonight? So let's pray. Father, we lift up the altar global to you. Lord, this is a movement that you birthed in the earth in 2021. And God, you have been so faithful to provide for this entire movement's needs according to your riches. We thank you for all the souls that are being saved and have been saved. We thank you for all the deliverance from devils. We thank you for all the marriages that have been healed and restored and for the physical bodies that you've touched. Lord, we sow seed this weekend into eternity. We sow seed into a generation being marked by your return. Lord, we pray for a spirit of generosity and joy, and we say no to manipulation and control and miserable giving in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, ushers, pass it around. You guys can give. I want to welcome Claudia Delgado to the platform for some housekeeping. Let's give Claude a round of applause. Praise the Lord. Is this on? Okay. Welcome, everyone. Who's excited about being here? Come on. Come on. If we're going to come to Voices in the Wilderness, you better not be quiet. Somebody look at your neighbor. I'm going to do this. We're going to kill the awkwardness. Look at your neighbor and say, I am a voice. And then look at your other neighbor and say, not an echo. <laughs> Come on. We're so excited that you guys are here. Voices in the Wilderness Conference. Can you raise your hand if you are from North Carolina? From North Carolina. 
Awesome, awesome. Now raise your hand if you are not from North Carolina. You came from out of state. Woo! Come on, Miss Sharon. Welcome. Welcome, you guys. Live stream. We just want to welcome you guys as well. Can everybody wave to the live stream? Our live stream family. Just want to just want to point to you guys. We're so grateful for your time. We're so grateful even just that for technology, that we can do this kind of stuff, that you can be watching from anywhere around the world. You can tune in with us. And my heart has really just been beating for the live stream. Yes, there's a move of God happening here. There's a holy invitation happening here starting tonight. This isn't just going to be a weekend, just a conference. We're going to come in here and just get our quick fix and go back home and everything's going to be the same. I really believe there's a holy invitation here this weekend that we can grab a hold of. But I really had a heart as we've been praying and fasting for the live stream audience. So I just want to communicate to the live stream that we're praying for you and we're believing for a move of God in your home, in your atmosphere, in your family, in your marriage, in the name of Jesus. So we're thankful that you guys can tune in. All right, guys, so I'm going to go over some housekeeping announcements. Just stay with me a little bit. We're going to go over a couple things. I know sometimes during announcements I can, you know, we can kind of lose you a little bit, but we're going over a few important things. All right, everyone, if you guys can go to the Jeremiah Johnson YouTube channel and share the live stream whenever you can, that way we can spread the word. That would be awesome. We're going live on his page, Jeremiah Johnson. Doors open one hour before each service. We're asking for no recording because we have the live stream available. Another thing that we're asking for is that all altar ministry. So we're super thankful for everyone in here that has a prayer life. Praise the Lord. But we are asking that all altar ministry, catchers, prophetic ministry, we just ask for no lobby prophetic ministry, parking lot prophetic ministry. We really ask if you guys can respect that all altar ministry, the laying on of hands, prophetic ministry, um, be with the altar global staff. And that's not because, please don't hear what I'm not saying, it's not because we don't believe that the Lord has given you a word, that we don't believe that uh, you have history in God, that you may have something for someone. But we just, we want you guys, we're really thinking of you guys, we want you to feel safe, that everybody that is approaching you with the word from the Lord, representing the Lord, that um, um, that we know them, we trust them, we know that they have character and integrity. So that's, a, that's one thing that we're asking. We're asking as well that you guys would please take all of your belongings with you after each session. So that's after each session. If we find any belongings, we have an amazing usher team here. And if we see any belongings in here, Bibles, phones or purses or notebooks or anything like that, we're going to be taking it to the lost and found at the registration table after each session. So please keep your belongings with you. We do have a product table. So that back room right there in the corner, it's right there. In that, somebody's waving back there. <laughs> There's product and merch. I'm actually wearing one of our conference merch. This is exclusive conference merch. We have some crew necks and hoodies and resources and books that Jeremiah has written that have transformed my life. That I know some of you guys that have read Jeremiah's books that have transformed your life. So go ahead and get some kingdom resources at the product table in the back. For safety, we are asking for kids to not run down the sanctuary. As you can see, we're on a hill, and it can be really dangerous. So parents, if you guys can just please make sure your kids are not running in the sanctuary for safety precautions. Parking, please follow the signs and the volunteers. We are so grateful to the church that's just a mile down the road that was gracious enough to partner with us for this event. We're so, so thankful for that. We were a little worried about the logistical, um, you know, planning, Tom. <laughs> we were a little worried about that because we were like, man, we want to facilitate these amazing weekends and moves of God and we don't want to say no to anyone. But then we were like, wait, we only have like a hundred parking spots. So how are we going to do this? So God made a way. God made a way for you guys to be here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There's a lot of planning that goes into these weekends, a lot of behind the scenes. And so we're so thankful that the Lord just opened up a door and was able to partner with the local church. So just make sure that you guys are parking there. Follow the signs and the volunteers. That's Charity Baptist Church. And we have a shuttle service. So we've had three, three shuttle services that are going to be shuttling you guys over here to the campus. For those of you who have pre-registered your children for child care during the night, ses night sessions, Please check in at the other side of the building. So this right here, this door where the lobby is, where you guys registered, is the main entrance. But there is another entrance that is towards the back. That is going to be child care check-in and registration there. All right, I want to recognize our partners. Partners, can you guys please stand? Partners of the Ultra Global, can we give our partners a hand, please? They're the reason why this event is free. 
We are so thankful for the giving, the generosity. Thank you, partners. You guys can be seated. We just want to honor you guys. We're so thankful for the generosity of the partners, just you guys partnering with the ministry, the mission, and the mandate of the Ultra Global, your prayers. I mean, Christopher Keller's in this room. He's our partner prayer coordinator. Who loves Christopher Keller? Where is he? Where is he? There he is. We're so thankful. Christopher is our partner prayer coordinator. He faithfully prays for our partners every single Monday night for this ministry, for the staff. And we're just so thankful for you guys' prayers. We're, thank you, we're thankful for your partnership to be able to do weekends like this. This is a huge part of our heart, our DNA, to gather under a corporate anointing. That this place would be a well of refreshing for so many. And we're just so thankful that partners, you guys choose to spend your weekends with us. That this is a place where you can come and be refreshed and drink. So we're so thankful for you guys. If you guys are interested in becoming a partner, we have a product, or not a product table, a partner table where you can get more information on what it looks like to be a partner. You do get discounts on all resources. You do get discount on altar school tuition. If you feel led to join the altar school online or in person, hybrid, you get discounts for that as well. So if you want to learn a little bit about partnerships, what it looks like to be a partner of this ministry, please visit that table. All right. Oh, another small thing. Partner, partners, please keep your lanyards on. That way we can know you're a partner so you can get VIP seating, that you can come up here to the front. And I think that is all. So I'm going to go ahead and welcome up Jeremiah. Thank you, guys. Testing. I am not Alan Hood. <laughs> We've had a couple of switches to the lineup. Alan contacted me this morning and fell ill and could not be with us this weekend. So here I am. <laughs> It feels like years ago when I used to do two sessions at our conference, but I just love to hear what other people have to say. And so um, when Alan called, I went to the Lord and just asked him, you know, Corey Russell and Alan Hood have been real fathers to this movement over the last couple of years, and I view them as anchors and pillars to what the Lord wants to do through this movement in the earth, and I deeply honor them and respect them. And as I prayed this afternoon and said, Father, what, what should we do? I feel like the Lord said to me, Jeremiah, it's very admirable that you have invited other fathers into this movement, but you're going to have to father this movement in a greater way. And so... Voices in the wilderness. Is that a pregnant, loaded? Oh my goodness. I think when we set out for this conference, my heart was like, voices. And Lord, we're going to gather an end time army. And we're going to break the power of religion off of everybody. And we're going to say no to status quo. And, Lord, we know that there are pioneers and reformers. And, Lord, we just thank you for people who just hate normal. If that's you, just shout at me. Oh, I knew you were here. I knew it. Voices, to be a voice. I've always felt that. I've always felt the fire the conviction, if you said everybody's going that way, I'm going the other way. Just always felt this call to be a voice. But as I prayed today, God really began to talk to me about the wilderness. Anybody know anything about the wilderness? You know, we're living in a generation, many of us, we don't want to be echoes. We don't want to mimic and copy and parrot what's, what's out there. We want to be voices. 
But the message that I'm going to bring tonight and start this weekend off with is called Discovering Love in the Wilderness. I believe that God is trying to shape the wineskin of this movement. I believe that God is trying to set the table and give language to who we really are. I want to just free you from thinking this is some kind of cult or a gang. We don't have to all look like and act like and talk like one another. But there is clear DNA that I believe God wants to inject into this movement. And I believe it's much larger, of course, than those of us who are in the room. It's global. But there are some things that I, I'm going to say tonight that I want to go on record as saying. And here's the first couple of statements. The only way forward for this movement is intense vulnerability, intense transparency, intense love and forgiveness. There's a reason why the Altar Global was birthed out of public humility and repentance. If you've never heard the story of how the Altar Global was born, I wrote a book called The Altar to try to not make it too hard. But I wrote the book The Altar chronicling the Lord in my journey leading me to a death of self and a death of a ministry and receiving his call to birth this movement. As I look back on my life and my journey, I see multiple seasons of intense warfare, rejection, misunderstanding, confusion, persecution, mistakes, immaturity, not knowing who to trust, longing for spiritual parenting. On our journey to be a voice, on our journey to swim upstream, on our journey to be radical and be extreme and to make a difference in the earth, on my journey as the founder and the father, I look back at my life and I see intense Warfare, intense rejection, intense misunderstanding, confusion, persecution, mistakes, immaturity, not knowing who to trust, longing for spiritual parenting. And I'm going to take a guess that if there are other people in this room who are longing to be voices in this generation that what I just described somehow has woven its way into your journey. Just wave at me. And so tonight's message is about me getting vulnerable even more so than I've done in the past few years and bring you into my storyline. I pray that in the awkwardness and I pray that in the vulnerability that the hard places of our hearts due to rejection and persecution would bow under the name of Jesus. I pray that there would be mass healing from trauma that you've experienced at the hands of church leaders. I pray that the spirit of rejection you've been carrying for 30 years from your family who didn't know what to do with you from the day you were born, I'm believing tonight that though we'll be rejected as voices, we don't have to operate in the spirit of rejection. See, I believe God wants to raise up a healthy and a whole generation of voices who don't prophesy out of anger, were moved by love. I believe that God is going to raise up a generation of voices in the earth who live in the intercession room, not the accusation room. 
I'm going to pray for deliverance from a critical fault-finding spirit. I'm going to pray that some of us will write letters to Saul's that we served saying, thank you for getting the Saul out of me. Okay, are we ready? Voices in the wilderness. God is not only raising up voices, but he has provided a place called the wilderness, our training ground. And what we have to recognize is everyone that's called to be a voice is going to the wilderness. But not everybody's coming out. Many are called, few are chosen. In other words, everybody's going to go through rejection and slander and persecution and confusion. Everybody that's truly called is going to experience that. But our choice is how we respond. Will we follow the more excellent way? Will we choose forgiveness? Will we give God our bitterness and our confusion or will we grab hold of it and will we prophesy out of our hurt and our pain? Any prophetic voice that does not believe they can become a Jezebel is deceived. Every prophetic voice that started out pure is deceived if they do not believe they can walk down the path of manipulation and control and seduction and flattery. See, there's quite a bit at stake tonight. And we need the help of the Holy Spirit to truly surrender our lives and our ministries before him, and not waste one more minute tonight thinking about someone else. I pray that 100% of our time tonight has everything to do with you and I postured before the Lord, not worried about someone else's issues, but in fact asking God if we become so great at pointing out other people's problems that we can't even see our own. I'm a voice to everyone else but myself. Would you pray with me? We're going to need the help of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a vulnerability. This movement is really going to scare people that are into performance. This movement is going to repel hypocrites. This is not going to be a place for people who would rather rend their garments and not their heart. When other people get vulnerable and they get real and they humble themselves, it will incite the pride and arrogance in other people. So I really want to encourage us as we begin down this track and I start talking to you about what I've been through, some of you are going to have PTSD reactions. You're going to begin to relive the trauma that you have endured at the hands of your family and the religious culture in the church. And we're going to have to work together by the power of the Holy Spirit. Some of you, you're going to need to pray in tongues underneath your breath for the next 45 minutes. We're going to desperately need the help of the Holy Spirit to not resist areas and spaces and places in our lives that he wants to heal and that he wants to bring deliverance and that he wants to bring restoration to. How many of you are feeling that? All right, let's, let's pray. Father, Lord, we humbly bow ourselves before you, Lord, on this opening night of Voices in the Wilderness. And God, I pray that love would have its way in us. 
Jesus, we thank you for your example of love and forgiveness in the face of persecution and slander and religion. And Father, we look to Jesus tonight as the author and the perfecter of our faith. And Lord, we ask at the altar global, God, that as you've gathered family, kingdom family here this weekend, I pray, Lord, that the religious facade and the games and the performance would just go away. And God, I pray that you would bring forth a people who are not into conference culture. Lord, would you gather people that are into family culture. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the self-protection mechanisms that we use to keep people really out of how we're really doing. God, I pray that you would gently pull our hands back and let us be loved. Will you let me love you this weekend? Will you let me love you as Father? And will you let me love you through my people? Lord, we say yes to healing and deliverance and freedom for voices in the wilderness. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have in your Bibles, would you turn to 1 Corinthians 13? I literally think this is crazy. I would have never thought I would have ever read 1 Corinthians 13 at a Voices in the Wilderness conference. Every authentic voice will be called to the wilderness, but not everybody will make it out. You know, when my wife and I said yes to God early on when we met, we had no idea truly where our yes would take us. And as you get older in life, which I realize we're still so young, you tend to look back and think, if someone would have cued me in to what I was saying yes to, I'm not really sure I would have gone down that path, if we're honest. How many people wave at me and say, yeah. Again, we feel that fire. We feel that conviction. We feel the devil raging. We want to do something about it. We fast and we pray and We go after Jesus with all that we have. When we said yes early on in our young lives, little did I know that I would take a group of young adults to a conference. And we're praising God and having a great time. And all of a sudden I hear this whisper that says, Jeremiah, you're going to plant a church. Now, I can just tell you, having been raised a pastor's son, my first words were, oh, God, no. I have a personal history that doesn't really line up with modern-day prophetic thought that every word from God is the one that confirms what's already in your spirit. I have a track record that every word from God was like in left, left field. Every word from God that was true automatically cut to the core of my flesh. And I said, Lord, is there another door? That's been my history with God. And when I've asked him why, why can't I stand up and say this was my idea, this is what I had in my heart, and here's what happened, the Lord said to me, so that you could never steal my glory. You will never be able to stand in front of people and tell them the good ideas and the good plans that you had. You will actually have to confess to people that what you're called to really you don't want to, but you can become a trophy of my grace. Plan a church. I said, oh, and I'm crying. I'm weeping. And the young people are thinking I'm having a welcomed encounter. And they're saying, more, Lord. And I'm saying, no, Lord. I don't know if you've ever had that, you know, some... 
compassionate usher. You know, you're just like down in the altar. God's dealing with you and inviting you to give more and die more. And you're like, oh, God, no, I'm, I'm done. And they're pouring it on. So I get up from the encounter, and I'm like, okay, I, 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 you know, I don't, I'm not sure the timing, but I'm just, I'm going to do the best that I know how. I'll, I'll meet with the pastor and let him know I had an encounter, and I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to plant a church. Well, in our youth, the Lord had connected us to a large church that we served at as young adult pastors. And this individual and his wife were a mother and father to us early on. And so I went in what I thought was an honorable way, what I thought was in a fatherly way, and shared what the Lord had said. I shared the encounter. And he spoke some words that I'll never forget. Again, we're here at Voices in the Wilderness asking Father to heal us of our trauma to deliver us from word curses that were spoken over us by others, even sometimes mothers and fathers in the faith. And he said to me, Jeremiah, if you want to plant a church now or ever, within 50 miles of here, you're fired. I literally go from just being a young person serving the Lord, had a vision... And then try to go back to a father figure and say, hey, this is just something God's put on my heart. I don't know about the timing. Maybe we can work together. And I'm met with now or ever within 50 miles, you can hit the door. I remember stumbling out of the front of that church, weeping and crying so hard that I blew a blood vessel in my right eye. The amount of disappointment and the amount of confusion, you know, there's a certain effect that older people can have on young people that's very detrimental. When young people go to who they perceive as fathers and mothers and they're met with religious persecution... And when they're met with insecurity and even witchcraft, it has an effect on them that can literally last for decades. How do I know? Some of you are here tonight. There were words that were spoken. There were encounters and situations that you ran into on your pursuit of trying to hear and obey God that you have never got healing from and that you are still in denial that you even got hurt because you're a voice. I wonder how much of a I'm a voice crying out in the wilderness. I wonder how much of the tough guy stuff is really just a cover for a broken, damaged heart. I wonder if all the yelling and the screaming and all the intercession and all of the boisterous noise that we love to make in the name of preparing a way for the Lord is really a cover-up that our own heart has yet to be prepared. Something else that happened in that season was there was an individual who had given a prophecy, connected it to me, and said that I was going to lead a mass exodus out of that church. So I was credentialed with a denomination during that season, and I was invited to a trial where I was invited to sit before three older men in a denomination and be put on trial for being a false prophet, for inciting division and rebellion in the house of God. Again, it was one thing to be rejected and persecuted by a father in the faith, but it was another thing to be put on trial. I even went as so far as to find the individual who gave that prophecy, have them sign an affidavit, and have it notarized that they were the ones who said that, and what was being said about me was completely false. I remember sitting outside of this parking lot again, crying my eyes out, lost, 
confused? Have you ever just been there? God, I'm just trying to obey you. I didn't ask for this. I, I, don't, I don't know what in the world is going on, but I'm just simply trying to obey your voice and listen and obey. I remember crying and I called a father in the faith who knew what was going on. And I'm, I'm debating whether I go before the Sanhedrin or I just, I'm sorry, flip him a bird. This father says, you need this for your destiny. Was it not Jesus who was led like a lamb to the slaughter and didn't even say a word? He said, you know what you need to do? You need to go in there and shut your mouth. You need to go in there, folks. I went in there for three hours and got raked over the coals. Every word, every damaging, every hurtful, every religious thing, every false accusation and lie that you could have told about me was said in front of a panel of people. I walked out of that meeting and remember being in a fetal position in our living room, which we had just got a house trying to obey the Lord to make room for young people. And oh, by the way, you're fired. Anybody ever stepped out in faith and wanted to make room for the Lord and then you're fired? And I'm crying and I'm in a fetal position and I said, Lord, I I just, is there anybody here tonight on your journey of being a voice that's lost and confused and wandering around somewhere in the wilderness, barely breathing, desperate for oxygen? And he said to me, Jeremiah, Isaiah, here's the scripture. Do I bring to the moment of delivery and not give birth, says your God. That one verse hit me in the chest like lightning. And I promise you that that one verse sustained me through what would become the most difficult season of our lives. My wife was best friends with the pastor's wife, so she was in the bed too in the fetal position crying. I said, Lord, what do we do? He said, fulfill my will. Do what I called you to do. Have you ever said yes to the Lord and then get hit with all this warfare and persecution and unforeseen circumstances and then you go back to the Lord to either try to get a free pass beyond more of it or maybe you try to bargain and say, I was really just kidding, can we start over? And he's like unfaced. I mean, can you imagine Samuel showing up to the house of Jesse and finally picking out David. And David gets this amazing prophecy as a young man. He's anointed king over Israel. But here's the thing. I feel like Samuel didn't really tell him everything. I think the prophet left like a 13-year period of being chased all over Israel by a demon-possessed leader. Hey, prof, you know, I mean, I appreciate the anointing, but you never told me there's a difference between the anointing and the appointing. There's there's actually this place called the wilderness. There's actually this training ground that's not about whether you're called or not. There's some people in this room, what you're facing, you're allowing to question the call, and it's not about the call. It's about character. 
Stop bringing before the Lord whether you're called or not. Bring before the Lord what in me needs to yield to the Holy Spirit so that I can be purified and refined and ready for my appointment. So we start a church years ago, it feels like now. And I'm in pain and I'm hurting, but I'm willing to obey God. And I'm just ready to forget the past. Forget them. And the Lord says, how about you put their picture on your fridge? How about they be the first faces you see every morning? And how about I give you an opportunity to choose love and forgiveness? I feel like I'm already losing. Some of you are manifesting already. (laughs) Got to go to the bathroom. Oh. First, and, and folks, I'll tell you, I don't know how many times I took the picture, crumpled it up, threw it in the trash, and went into, not intercession. I said, up, 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 put, put it back up. So we begin this journey of every morning having the opportunity to choose. Listen to me. A lot of us, you could not control what happened, but you can control how you respond. There's a choice there. Do I respond in love? The Lord wasn't asking me to go back and be their best friends. The Lord was just asking me to posture my heart in love and for. Well, they never repented. Did Jesus choose forgiveness because they repented? No, I believe he hung there on the cross being falsely accused and beaten and slandered and ultimately murdered and yet in his heart was, Father, forgive them. So we're there posturing our hearts every morning and then the unthinkable step two. I want you to sow money into them anonymously. But wait a minute, we're the ones without the job. I mean, I might stretch some people here, but folks, I've been walking with my God who's asked me to sow according to his riches and not what's in the bank. My my journey in the wilderness has been God asked me to sow financially, specifically into people that I've had a problem with to deliver me of the problem. Which means you're going to give them a lot of money until it hurts. Oh, I'm talking recent. Like two years ago, I just drove 500 miles. Wrote a guy a check for $10,000 that's been slandering me online for five years. And said, I bless you and I release you and I forgive you in Jesus' name. (laughs) Never had a problem again. Maybe if it cost us something, it it wouldn't linger so much. Start sowing. Folks, again, we have no money. We just got a house that now we can't even pay for. And as we start the process of forgiveness at a heart level, and then God says, now it's time to sow financially, $1,100 cash starts showing up in the mailbox every month. We begin to walk in this God's will is God's bill. But you've got to follow. You've got to hear and obey. We start this process, and little did we know that if you plan a church, it's just like, hey, Jezebel, come over here. (laughs) Brian, people tell me they're going to plan a church. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm called to the ministry. Oh, my word. I hope you're called. We go through this intense season of Jezebel. 
thou assault? And it's like you get, Lord, is it over? Did I pass the test? Am I good enough? And then some of us, we, we go on orphan rabbit trails in the wilderness. You know what an orphan rabbit trail in the wilderness looks like? It looks like questioning whether God is good or not. It looks like saying, Lord, what did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. The fact that you're in the wilderness is a sign he loves you. Because the word of God says he disciplines those he loves. He's a God who rewards growth with pruning. Do you know how many people waste years and years in the wilderness thinking that God is mad at them when really he's madly in love with them? And the fact that you're facing such intense opposition is not a sign that you should curse God and die. The fact that you're facing crazy opposition is a sign that the Lord your God is with you and he will deliver you from all your trials. And if you will trust him, he will set your feet upon the solid rock and he will put a new song in your mouth and he will put songs of deliverance, songs of joy in the midst of affliction I I don't want any more orphan rabbit trails in the wilderness questioning my calling, wondering if God is mad at me I feel like the prosperity gospel has done so much damage in the church that we're now attributing works of God to Satan. Jesus picked up a cross, not so that you don't have to. He picked his cross up to show you how to pick up yours. That other stuff is false gospel grace that's sending millions of people to hell around the world. Lord, help me to filter and interpret your ways and your dealings in my life as love. See, you have to heal in order to hear. You know why so many can't hear me tonight? We haven't healed yet. Repent. I'm never going to be good enough. They keep calling more fast, James. They they want more money. I'm never going to be good enough. I'm an orphan. I'm a victim. Oh, God. Here goes another rabbit trail. And again, that might last four months, four years. You meet people in the body of Christ, their growth in Christ has been seriously stunted for years because they do not rightly hear and receive the dealings of God in their life because we're still stuck in the orphanage. Repent. If I'm a son and I'm a daughter and I understand the ways of God, when I hear repent, I say, thank you, God. Thank you that you love me enough to not leave me the way that you found me. Father, thank you for pointing out the errors of my way. Father, thank you. See, if we don't recognize this kind of father, you'll never find your spiritual father. Because you're still looking for a sugar daddy. You're... You're still looking for someone to give you their platform. And God's not interested in giving you his platform because he doesn't have one. He sits on a throne. I'm not going to teach on parenting. A couple sentences. Sarah ain't even a parent yet. Hold on. (laughs) We form and shape our children's beliefs concerning who God is 
based off of our interactions with them. If I give my child whatever they want, whenever they want, and there's no consequences for their actions, I have led them to a God of their imagination and not the God of the Bible. I just feel like I could... I see seasons and seasons and seasons in my life. I'm thinking like 2015. It's like, I, I want to be a voice. And the Lord's like, how about a little elevation? Well, you know, when you stick your head out of a foxhole, you're going to get shot. It's called live fire. The more God elevated me, the more I became a target. I'm in 2015, and this woman is, is literally just trashing me online. Emailing, calling people, character assassination. And I'm like, Lord, I thought I was done with this. I call a mentor. Brother, there's a spirit of false accusation coming against me. You know what this father says? What if it's true? I hung up on him. <laughs> I've got to be vulnerable. I thought, it, I thought this was spiritual fathering. I needed a massage. I needed a... Oh, yeah, they're liars. We're going to get them. We'll make it right. We'll avenge your character because it's all about you. We'll set the record straight. No, what, what if it's true? I get before the Lord and he says 21 day fast. I know we fast for a lot of things. I go on a 21 day fast asking the Lord about the spirit of accusation. And if there's any lesson in it. And he says to me. What if I'm so good that I will use even the accusations against you that are false as a tool to conform you into my image and likeness? You know how easily we just brush off things that lies, that's not true, while it builds our ego? I know I'm really stretching us. We, we don't even entertain or give God an opportunity to even probe our hearts and say, maybe it's true. See, one of the questions I have for us tonight is, what triggers you? Because some people get so triggered about certain subjects and topics and words that they can't even stand one second of getting before the Lord saying, Father, reveal truth. Nope. You know, this is what getting hurt does. Getting wounded and running into a church that hurt you and now I'll never go back to church because they're all religious. And we start making vows and secret oaths in our hearts about how we're never going to again. And meanwhile, we're just in quicksand in the wilderness making no progress. I felt like the Lord gave me five Lessons in the wilderness for you tonight. If you want to write these down. I believe the Lord is looking to raise up healthy, whole voices in the earth. I believe that his training ground is the wilderness. It's the seasons of life where we have to interpret his ways and his character and his nature so that we can keep moving forward. Number one, voices are revelatory, not reactionary. Voices are revelatory, not reactionary. 
Many times because of what we've gone through and the hurt and the pain, we speak and operate out of reaction rather than revelation. I was called into a church one time, and there was a a prophetic brother there that at one time in his life was very accurate and was a great blessing to the body of Christ. But at some point in his life, they were having issues with him because every woman that rose in leadership was called a Jezebel by him. They had noticed a pattern that had developed where any woman with strong leadership capacity, he labeled as a Jezebel and tried to drive them out. And so they invite me in for some conversation. And it's always funny when you get with prophetic people, they want to tell you how accurate they are and who they know. This is what they prophesied, and this is what school and what network they're a part of. And so I have a meeting with him, and he's just literally nonstop talking for 20 minutes. And then when he finally catches his breath, I say, hey, tell me about your relationship with your mom growing up. I kid you not, he starts growling. I said, oh, there's some pain there, eh? I said, so you've been married, let me guess, three times. Oh, okay, so you were wounded by your mom, and then you got married once and threw her away and used her, and then you went on to the next woman and the next woman. I I said, what if you have the Jezebel? Is this recorded? It's like people online are calling people Jezebels and they're Jezebel. People that are wounded and hurt on their journey to be a voice. We start talking more about what we're against than what we're for. You know how many church plants and how many gatherings and and how many internet chats are all about how bad the church is and how much of a whore she is and how religious and this leader and that. And and we're, we're gathering out of reaction. We're reacting out of our hurt and our pain and our victimization. And we get, it's like you're bleeding in the ocean and here come the sharks. And you better believe that spirit of Jezebel, it hits you when you're in transition. It hits you when you're in pain. And here's how you know, if you're in pain and you go to a healthy person that understands gossip and slander are not sanctioned by the spirit of God. If you go to a healthy person who understands and at least has a relationship with the Holy Spirit, if you go to that person and have an issue, they're going to point you back to that person. They're going to point you back to solutions of health. But oftentimes when you are hurting and you are broken and you are angry, you take counsel with other hurting, wounded, broken people, and it forms a coven of Jezebel and witchcraft. These things are destroying the work of God in cities all over the earth. You know, when you're on your, your, your training, it's like, Again, I say this in love. Let love have its way. It's like we've all been hurt. I've never met in my life someone that had an authentic call that had not been through hell. Ever. And my own own conviction is the Lord is going to raise up a generation of leaders that are going to start talking about the hell they went through. There's a major issue in the charismatic circles where we have propped up mighty anointed men and women of God 
who we want them to lay hands on us for an impartation. And the truth is, if you knew what they went through to get it, you would not run down here, you'd run out there. He's just so, I'm called, great. Come to the wilderness. Come for the greatest crucifixion. Resurrection's coming, but I'm just telling you, real gospel is you can't live unless you die. I got a prophecy. I went to a conference. And then it's like we, we have, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to stay on, on point, but we have prophets just like seagulls flying around the body of Christ, prophesying over people in a community who never consult with spiritual leadership, who can kind of help you like, hey, he didn't say you were going to be Billy Graham. He said you're going to go to the prisons as an evangelist. But everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants influence. Everyone wants to be the loudest voice in America. But the loudest voice in America has nothing to do with platform or influence. The loudest voices in America are the lowest voices who have learned the lessons of the wilderness and have come out leaning upon their beloved. Though he slay me, I will praise him. See, there, we, are, we are in a desperate need for these folks. Many of them are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old in the body. They're gold. But because they don't have a following, young people won't get with them. There is gold in this room. There are marriages and people who have been through the wilderness for decades and still have come out praising God. But young people don't want to talk to you because you don't have a blue check mark. They don't want to talk to you because you didn't go to the Grammys. I still have one more session. My, my, my next session that the Lord gave me is all about spiritual parenting in Elisha generation, so I'll save that. But heal so you can hear. What are your triggers? Where's your trauma? Don't establish a, ministering or a, call, a ministry or a calling based off of reaction. Get into the place of prayer and get a revelation. Number two, and it parallels heal. So voices are revelatory, not reactionary. Voices live in the prayer room, not the accusation room. The prayer room is salvation, theologically correct. Jesus is our salvation, okay? The prayer room is a type of salvation, a type or a shadow, to voices where it provides the environment that you need to take your pain and your hurt and your frustration and work it out and leave it at the foot of the cross, you went in angry and you come out full of love. You, you went out ready to rail the body of Christ and you come out and all you have are tears. The prayer room. There's no one famous. There's not large crowds. It's just you and I, we need more training in prayer rooms across the globe. It's even better. The less people are there, the better. Because the more performance and delusions of grandeur will get washed and cleansed out of you. I, I, thought, I thought I was going to be a voice. Where's the mic? What if God's not into mics? What if everybody that has a mic is getting my reward on earth when really we should be getting our rewards in heaven? Thank God for the folks who never get a mic. Great is their reward. Discernment. Brother, there is just that church and that individual. And I had a guy one time in Colorado. He came 
came up to me and said, I have been given the ministry of tearing churches down. And again, he, he let Robin prophesy by this person, and I went to this school, and I, anointed. I said, brother, do you know that accusation is not a ministry of the Holy Spirit? Yes. How much time are you actually spending in the place of prayer getting God's heart before you just want a microphone so you can have a spiritual you-know-what? There are, there are voices that are being raised up. There are movements that are being born in the earth. Revelation 12, it says that the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth in order to devour the child when it came. When God is birthing voices and calling them out, when God is birthing movements and he's raising up new wineskins, there is a dragon that guards the gate called wilderness. And rather than entering into the wilderness of prayer and intercession and learning how to go low and say, Father, you know best. Father, I trust you. I love you. However long it takes to refine me and purify me. Father, I know even at the end of the wilderness doesn't have to be a new car, a new house. It might not have anything to do with your promotion in the West. I mean, what do you even tell people in China and in Africa? Go to the wilderness. Go, go through suffering so that you can get rich. Brother, I'm only going to the wilderness if there's something good for me on the other side. His name is Jesus. No, I'm not going. I, I'm, I mean, I'll do some time in prayer, but, I mean, it better be unto, like, my next iTunes hit. I mean, I'll, I'll serve, I mean, as long as it somehow gets me to the top. So this voice of accusation, folks, I'm prophesying to you. There is a spirit of accusation alive in the body of Christ today that was weaponized during COVID. The body of Christ Satan's accusation room, his best clients are Christians. We have weaponized the spirit of accusation in the body of Christ where we are ready to attack and go after anyone and everything that's not in alignment with what we think they should be doing. How do you get out of the... So, again, Revelation 12, the dragon sits over things that are being born. Then we find out verses later, day and night before the throne of God, he accuses the saints. He accuses you to you. He accuses God to you. 24-7 accusation room that Satan is running in the earth today. He's inviting voices, come into the accusation room and let me poison you you and inject you with bitterness and unforgiveness and I'm telling you that poison that the enemy injected in you years ago you are going to get delivered from tonight I, I will roll around on the floor with you we will roll around. We will do whatever that you need to do to stop accusing and criticizing anything and everything that's not in alignment with who you think they should be. And the more I've rolled around with these people over the years, the more you come to realize they're a voice to everyone else but themselves. They can tell you everything wrong with the body of Christ but can't even see the dysfunction of their own marriage. We want to pray for salvation, for prodigals on the microphone again and you don't even know one lives at your home. The 
this is not prophetic ministry. I'm a voice. Stop. This is prophetic ministry. This is the cross. This is the blood of Jesus. What does it mean to be a voice coming out of the wilderness full of love? and forgiveness and humility and more character and more integrity and more brokenness. We can't get there unless we embrace the cross. Because there ain't no way you and I are ever going in. To the flesh, this smells like death. But to those who are in the spirit of Christ, I'm preaching life. Oh, Lord, I pray that every marriage that's underneath a spirit of accusation. I used to have couples that would come into my office. I need pastoral counseling. We're in another fight. We're in another wreck. He did this. He did that. Here's what I used to do. You're going to go to a prayer meeting before I see you. The counseling got cut down 60%. Because as they got into the place of prayer and they gave over their anger, frustration, rage, and unforgiveness to the Lord, they didn't have much to say after that. I'm all about being a voice. I'm all about raising the standard of, you guys know this. You know that I love truth. You know that I drop a plumb line. You know that I believe America is in the greatest crisis and under the greatest incessant attack of evil we've ever known. There's never been a more urgent need for voices. But we need voices who have been trained in the wilderness who have discovered the love of God. Lord, get me out of the accusation. So you're either in the 24-7 accusation room where we know Jesus, he runs the 24-7 prayer room. There's two simultaneously rooms, and every day you have an opportunity to enter into one. Accusation or intercession. Accusation or intercession. Lord, put a guard over my mouth. Listen, is this helping anybody? Here's what I see all the time. Someone who has paid a price and has walked through the wilderness and who has been mantled with maturity in God's heart rises up and says a hard thing to the body of Christ. Their training in the wilderness qualified them to be an authentic voice of truth in the body. They put it on social media. Here's what happens. It incites and it invites men and women who have never been to the wilderness to copy and parrot what they're saying, not knowing that when you begin to mimic and copy and parrot words of truth that you have not paid a price for, you will become like Gehazi. And you will come under warfare that you're not ready for because you never paid a price. I'm not against correction and rebuke, but it must be patterned after Christ. I'm not, after, I'm not against a plumb line, but baby, you better have laid down your life for the church. I'm all for it. This is wrong and this is wrong. The moment I find out you don't serve in a local church, delete. This is wrong with the church and this is, what are you doing about it? Do you know how many people across the internet sit there all day, every day, talking about what's wrong for the church and they have no skin in the game? They are unwilling to die For a bride that they so accuse and they're pattering themselves after Satan and not Christ. Can we expose the accuser for a minute? That little snake? How'd he start out as a snake in Genesis and turn into a dragon in Revelation? We fed him. 
Ooh, it, 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 just a little whisper. I was a prophetess and I got into a, a relationship with a spiritual father and they wounded me and hurt me. And I've been holding on to that pain for like 14 years. And what started as a little whisper of my worth and my value and my significance and how I didn't have what it took. That little snake has turned into a dragon and now I can't even lift my voice in the body. And when I do, I accuse because really I'm still mad at God. Oh, the need for healing is urgent. The need for deliverance is, is, is preeminent among voices. Lord, give us voices in this nation, but give us voices who are carrying a cross. God, give us voices full of love and forgiveness. Give us voices who will confront, but they're willing to confront with their life and not their language. I want to be more than a Facebook status. I want to be an epistle. I want to be more than a voice. I want my life to be a voice. I want to do more than criticize. I want to let what I've built criticize. All the churches in this city are religious. And what are you building? It's quiet in here. Come on. Come on, hear the Father saying, come home. Hear the Father saying, I'm wanting to consecrate you and heal you and deliver you and purify you like you've never seen before. But he wants to heal the trauma. Francis Frangipane, more churches have been destroyed by the accuser of the brethren and its fault finding than either immorality or misuse of church funds. So prevalent is this, in, is this influence among many that fault finding has been elevated as the status of ministry. The Lord has promised, however, that in his house, accusing one another will be replaced with prayer and fault finding with a love that covers a multitude of sins. The fault finder demon will incite individuals to spend days and even weeks unearthing old faults or sins in their minister or church. The people who are held captive by this deceitful spirit become crusaders, irreconcilable enemies of their former assemblies. In most cases, the things they deem wrong or lacking are the very areas in which the Lord seeks to position them for intercession. Here's the easiest way. I've learned a little trick, Brian. The, the, the nursery carpet is awful. Would you like to pay for that? Oh, no. The sound system in here sucks. You got a wallet? It, it, it's, a, it's amazing when you just ask people to do something about what's bothering them that you dismantle their voice. And there, there's no condemnation in this room. There's the conviction of the Holy Spirit telling people right now, you need deliverance from the spirit of accusation. The Spirit of God is telling people in this room, stop entertaining conversations with people who are bleeding out in the wilderness. They're going to drag you into it and you'll never get out. When you entertain and hang around accusation and bitterness and unforgiveness, it will keep you in the wilderness and chain, like a chain and ball and keep you. I feel like some people in here, you need to confess. You need to tell someone, oh, my Lord. For whatever reason, my initial prayer meeting has turned into an accusation room. What started as a conversation about a difference or a concern with a leader, I've, I've, I can, I've given them permission to assault and gossip and slander. And oh my God, I'm a safe place for demons. 
is why I'm using the word deliverance. This is a deliverance issue. I've seen people get delivered of all sorts of things, but that fault-finding accusation demon won't go because they're calling it discernment. It's a great opening session, Father. He loves us. What's the title of this? Discovering Love in the Wilderness. Wow. He loves us enough to lead us into revelatory, not reactionary. He loves us enough to say get in the prayer room and get deliverance from the accusation room. Number three, the voice, voices are full of love and not anger. Ephesians 5.25, I think Jesus makes this so clear. Paul, under the inspiration of scriptures, husbands, love your wives as? And how did he show his love for the church? By posting on social, oh. He demonstrated his love with sacrifice. What if we have no right to operate in discernment and to identify what's wrong unless we're willing to lay down our life? Again, I'm willing to hear it all. I'm willing to hear the voices of concern and all the sin and all the unrighteousness. But how given over to righteousness are you? And how many voices are you raising up unto righteousness? I, I hear this phrase in here, turn the corner. Some of you, you are in a turn the corner weekend where you have got to turn the corner. I feel some of you, there's some kind of familiar spirit thing going on. I feel some of you, you, you get a realm of freedom, but then you keep getting invited back to conversations. Again, sometimes when truth is spoken by voices trained in the wilderness, we think it gives us permission to start talking like them when we haven't lived like them. Some of us need to detox from hearing truth from people who have paid a price because we think it's giving us permission not to pay our own. It's okay. Delete your social media. It's okay. I've done it. Multiple. It's okay. Just shut it all down and listen. Well, bro, listen to the voice of God. Stop getting around people who are inciting you into more holy righteousness and a voice. And meanwhile, your life is full of lethargy and laziness and casual harlotry. Stop. Four, voices recognize their need for others and community. I hate to tell you, but we're going to have a couple more squirmers. I'm almost done. Your safety as a voice is in numbers. We have too many voices living like they're under an old covenant. I'm a prophet. I'm a voice. And the only person I answer to is God. You're in the wrong covenant. It's amazing in Acts 13 it says, There were prophets and teachers in the church. It's amazing in Ephesians 4, prophets have been called to train and equip a body. How can you train and equip a body you're not connected to? Folks, we have two. I'm a voice. What church do you attend? Ah, oh, they're all religious. You, you need deliverance. No, oh, I, I, I beg you, I plead with you to get free this weekend. They're not all religious. When, when that accuser injection, you get shot with that, you start talking in generalities. They're all religious. They're all going to hell. 
the spirit of accusation comes to harm, not heal. The spirit of accusation, because it's fractured and it's hurt and it's wounded like a, a one-winged bird that's flapping around. It needs healthiness and wholeness. I, I, I just want to say as a father to some of us, God is more interested in changing you than using you. Some of you, I, I, I feel some of us need a time out from the voice stuff. No more voice stuff, carpet time. No more, no more, bing, 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 bing. I'm a voice, I'm a prophet, I'm a discerner. Just put the guns down. Stare at the cross for the next 21 days. Brother, how are you so empowered? Jesus. He, he leaves us without excuse. All of our pain and all of our brokenness and all of our wounding and all of our, I just see... Some of us are sitting on toilets in the spirit. You're literally sitting on a toilet of poo-poo. It's, it's like dung to him. I've done this and I've done that and just flush it, saints. We, we had two water mains break on this property this week. The whole neighborhood didn't have water, but we did. I began to think to myself, my gosh, God's going to flush some of us out this weekend. We came to a conference wanting Jeremiah and the speakers to yell and shout and cheer us into the front lines of the battle. And what actually happened was it was like, May Day, May Day. Where's the medics? Oh, hold on. Folks, I hope this is okay. I've, I've had to realize self-awareness. Somebody like, what have you learned in church leading over 15 years? Probably we're weakest at self-awareness. How are you so consumed with the flaws of others you literally can't see your own? It's like this... You have to have enough self-awareness to know I've got the armor on, but that arrow just flew, flew in the mid, like I'm hit. You, you don't have to keep posting and doing ministry and just lay down. This isn't a show. This isn't a performance. You don't have to. The, the show ended at the cross. Jesus made a public spectacle of the religion circus. You've you got to have self-awareness. It's like, again, I know we're all tough. I feel like I'm talking to some tough guys like me. Brother, I could take anything. And, I, and you're like, dude, you're, you're wounded. You are hurt. You are bleeding out. And the Father sent you here this weekend. I feel like, I mean, I wish my arms are bigger. I'm like, I feel like the altar call is, do you need a hug? I know a good hugger in here. <laughs> oh. I hope, I just hope this is coming through. I just, I see an end time army. I see, I see voices all over the earth, but they're healthy and they're whole and they live in the prayer room and they're free from accusation and they're not a safe place for gossip and slander. They're, they're mantled with love and forgiveness and, and humility. What if loud messages are not going to save Gen Z? What if tears are? Like, what, what was the message? Uh, the, the guy just started weeping. Okay. Like the Grammys. Grammys, you, you've... Maybe you didn't watch it, but you had to see something. On. Like, where were the tears? You know what I'm saying? What are your triggers? P people get so... Ah! Ah! Go, go lay down. Go lay down. Stop. 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 Throw that stinking computer out of your house. You're being a portal for the accuser. Stop. I'm a voice. Stop. 
Are you even helping anybody in your, in your neighborhood? Why, why do we feel so free to go after and accuse people on the internet we don't even know? Or we're not even willing to help the dying and the broken around us. Where, where does this come from? It can't be God. We need community. We need one another. We need people who love us enough to say, hey, brother, I so appreciate your passion. Your prophecies are awesome, but your marriage is a wreck. Brian, can we say this? I mean, I just, I, I love, I love how you cook, and I love the hospitality. I, I love how, how late you stay at night, but, like, your kids look like they hate God just want to make sure that you're putting as much energy and as much passion and staying after as church as you are staying after at their ball games. And I, I just think the root of this is the ancient evil of pride. We just get blinded by pride and self-righteousness and arrogance and we're ready to take the bat to everybody else, and we don't even know God wants to paddle us. Last one, five. Voices look to wisdom and leadership. I would say that <sighs> there's no way I would have made it, and the jury's still out on me, I would have never made it through these seasons without voices of leadership. There's no way. Oh, my gosh. Folks, so hurt, so wounded, so angry, so ready to quit on the body, so ready to keep the accusation room open. And it was these voices, these moms and dads, these pastors, just these people. You just, well, I want a spiritual dad. I'm going to tell you on Saturday, you got it wrong. Elisha wasn't searching for Elijah. Elijah went and found Elisha. I'll talk about that on Saturday. But you just got to keep your head up. When, you're in, when God is working on you, he's dealing, just keep your head up and look for the voices. Look, look for the wisdom. Look, look for the fathers. Look, look, look for that someone that's not going to Embrace your victimization and your carnality. You, you, I have people, they call me, and I, before, when, they're, when their name rings up, I go, oh, they're calling me, why? I'm going to tell them the truth. Do you have people in your life who you can literally pick up on the phone and you know your flesh is about to manifest? I try it too. I mean, sometimes, it, you know, it's like I called Patricia King. I mean, here, this movement would not even exist without that woman's words to me. How much do I value leadership and the wisdom of fathers and mothers on, on my journey? I mean, it's life to me. Are, are we just... Have, have, when's the last time you just asked somebody what they thought about what you just did? Preferably before you did it. <laughs> I mean, are, are we so mature now that we don't need to run anything and buy anybody? Just crazy. It's like you meet parents, like they're drowning, and you're like, um, there's like 50 other couples in this congregation that have already raised kids. I'm pretty sure if you said, help, mayday, may, I'm pretty sure there would at least be one that would have compassion for you. And maybe they did great. It's probably better if they did worse so they can tell you what not to do. Okay, so we're going to pray tonight. How are we doing? The first step toward healing is to get out of denial. Okay. I'm going to pray against a spirit of denial. Some of us have forgotten how to feel. 
You've been hurt so many times, you've become hardened, and you're totally opposed to the idea of getting whole. As long as I'm a victim, I have people's attention. But if I choose healing, it's just me and the Father now. We're going to come against denial. We're going to ask God to reveal our hearts, where we're really at with him. And then we're going to ask him for grace and a lot of hugs. Don't get weird this weekend on me, though. <laughs> Sir, don't start hugging women. Ma'am, don't start hugging men. But maybe ask him, say, hey, can I just, can we just be vulnerable this weekend? Can we just be like, man, this, we're only in February? I mean, my gosh, I've been going through hell. And if that's you, I just, you don't need to pray. You don't need to prophesy. You don't need to act like you're going on. Just say, help. Because help is a confession of humility. Help is a confession that I'm in need. Amen. Bow your heads with me, if you will. Father, you know our thoughts, our actions, the secret desires and motivations of our hearts, and we can't hide them from you. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity tonight at the Voices in the Wilderness to come clean. Lord, we give you our anger our rage, our bitterness, our unforgiveness. Some of you know, I, I've, got, I've got to leave this here tonight. I've got to get deliverance. Some of you, you feel icky. You feel yucky. That's the spirit of witchcraft that's on you. If that's you, I want you to come down to the front. If you feel like you need deliverance from trauma, Maybe some of the stories that I've shared have triggered something in you on your journey to becoming a voice. You want to leave it at the altar tonight. You want to lay it at the foot of the cross. I want to invite you down to the front. We're going to ask God to clean out our filter. We're going to ask God to break the spirit of accusation and torment. If you've been in the accusation room, come down. If you've been running an accusation room called a life group, come down. If Jezebel's your friend, come down. If you know the spirit of Jezebel has attached itself to you on your prophetic journey, come down. God is speaking to some people about abandonment issues. Some of you are operating in manipulation and control because you're afraid of being rejected. You experience deep abandonment and rejection as a child. And as you've gotten older, you've learned how to manipulate and control so that people won't reject you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would even reveal that tonight. If you're on our prayer team, I want you to come forward and find somebody you can pray with. Should be plenty of us here. If you're sitting down, I want you to begin to pray in the Spirit. Would you pray with me that God would raise up whole and healed voices in the wilderness? encourage you to begin to pray for a church begin to pray for a leader begin to just pray for someone operate in intercession pray that that spirit of accusation would go
just going to wait on him a minute. Lord, we just command a spirit of bitterness tonight to come out right now in Jesus' name. Some of you, there's shame on you, and there should be no shame. There should be no shame. All voices need deliverance. All voices need healing. We should normalize healing. We should normalize deliverance. God, here we are. Search us and know us. Find any offensive way in us. Lord, I pray tonight that social media accounts would be deleted. God, I pray tonight that phone numbers would be deleted. Lord, I pray that you would sever demonic relationships in Jesus' name. Some of you are caught in a crossfire. You didn't even mean to. It's okay. You just thought they wanted to talk. And you ran into a demonic web. There's freedom tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for every illegal phone call in the Spirit to be canceled right now in Jesus' name. Every tormenting voice that keeps you up at night. We command it to go right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke charismatic witchcraft. Prayers that are not from God. Prayers that are manipulating. Prayers that are controlling. We command you to cease right now in Jesus' name. I need some people to get up and intercede with me. If you feel this in the atmosphere, folks, we have destinies. We have futures on the line tonight that we need to come with them like midwives and help them give birth and help them turn the corner. Come on, get rid of that pus. Lord says, I'm healing that infection. I'm just seeing wounds and infections and pus. Lord is beginning to extract and uproot. We command these roots to be uprooted right now in Jesus' name. The Lord is dealing with a spirit of rebellion against authority. We just call out the sins of Korah in Jesus' name. Every demonic spirit that rebels against godly leadership, we command you to come out right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of division and fault-finding We command you to leave this place right now in Jesus' name. Come on, just a few more minutes. Let's pray. We pray for a Holy Spirit takeover. Some of you were bitten by divorce. Some of you have gone through a divorce and you were bitten by the serpent. In the name of Jesus. We say that cycles and patterns are being broken. Cycles of depression. 
cycles of accusation. We thank you for freedom in the name of Jesus. There are people in this room that you have been accused. You aren't the one doing it, but that spirit has come upon you and against you. Some of you are under witchcraft attack. And we break its power right now in Jesus' name. If you feel you're under attack, I want you to wave at me. There's church leaders. There's people in this room. It's your in-law. It's your parent. We break you free from every demonic influence in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to just say, I renounce. I forgive. I release. Boya Ramanda Ramanda Raboya Rama. Some of you are under physical attack. Some of you are under the spirit of affliction because of demonic assault. We command the spirit of affliction to come off your body. The spirit of infirmity to leave you right now in Jesus' name. Shandarabakaya robo sandarabakaya raba sandarabakaya raba kaya raba ba. Onda raba nda raba shanda raba sanda raba kaya robo sanda raba kaya raba kaya raba. Come on, open up your mouth. Some of you, you need to pray through. Pray through. Pray through. Yanda raba nda raba kaya robo sanda raba kaya robo sanda raba kaya raba sanda raba kaya raba. Ondo romanda ramanda ramanda rabo shanda raba sanda raba kaya robo siya raba kaya raba. Monda ramanda raba sanda raba kaya robo shanda raba kaya raba. Mondo romanda ramanda raba kaya raba kaya. More healing, God. More deliverance, God. More forgiveness, God. Make us unoffendable, God. Unoffendable. It's a sign of spiritual maturity. It's the glory of man to overlook an offense. I just see arrows being released. And if you'll just bow, they'll miss you. I see attacks from the enemy through arrows that fly by day. And if we'll just bow before the Lord of glory, they won't even hit you. Lord, we just go low tonight. The Lord is delivering somebody of self-hatred. You've struggled with your weight your whole life. You find yourself being mean to others because really you hate yourself. Lord, in Jesus' name, we release healing. The Lord is delivering someone from the spirit of anorexia and bulimia. 
We just command self-hatred to go in Jesus' name. I feel like the Lord is saying to many marriages two words be nice here's your prophetic word be nice if you're standing I want you to find somebody around you and I want you to be nice I want you to say something nice. I want you to pray something nice. I want you to prophesy a word of encouragement. Go ahead. Go ahead. Every person touch tonight. No accusation. No meanness. No criticism. No judgment. Just be nice. Lord, we bless them. We love on them. We encourage them. We exhort them. You're going to make it. You're on the right track. If God be for you, who can be against you? God works all things together for the good. God's a good God. He's a kind God. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. Come on, be nice. 30 more seconds. Stir one another to love and good deeds. Yeah, 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 Thank you, Jesus. We're going to allow ministry to keep going tonight. If you're done, if you need to go, we love you. We'll be back tomorrow at 4 a.m. Just kidding. Doors will open up at 8.30. We'd love for you to join us tomorrow. Thanks for jumping in. God bless you if you've got to go. We'll keep ministering, but have a great night.